we go, and we are live on Riverside FM. <laughs> Happy days. <laughs> yeah. Man, this is cool. Brad, it's been obviously a pleasure getting to briefly know you and setting up this podcast. Um, so yeah, I suppose we're going to delve straight into this topic we've been chatting about for a while, but um, maybe we should kick start it off with, uh, I mean, uh, where we started with our re- brief relationship and you contacted me after listening to the podcast that I was on and, and, and sharing the same kind of sentiments and feelings. What exactly happened there when you watched that podcast? What was your kind of, yeah. Jeez. Just, just well, you there. know what? It was probably one of the best podcasts I've seen in ages. It was just, it was so positive oh. <laughs> and just so much resonance with all three of you. I mean, I had spoken to Dave a while back before, really had a good chat with him. I've seen Ben in the past too. I really like his stuff. And then I'd never, obviously you were new, you know, and, and just the things you were saying totally resonated in the sense that I think I've kind of had a very similar situation with regards to all this, not that I, I've been awake for a long time, but the unfolding of it being more in our face now with work and, you know, with the whole thing that's happened. But yeah, so, I mean, I just, there was lots of things in there. I mean, the, the, everything in there from the crypto discussions to the, just this, the, in, you know, general way of living in a new energy at the moment i'd say which is really really what what's happening for me more and more and i think for all of us more and more but i think it was just the way you said it with your job and you just saw that everything didn't seem right you know you knew it wasn't right Mm. internally your heart said no this is not happening the way i want it to happen why is no one seeing it kind of thing and i had a very similar Mm. situation at work um which pushed me into what i'm doing now more and more so yeah, literally, I just thought, you know what, I got to have a chat with this guy, you know. And also, of course, you're one of my townies. I've been been there for a long time, and from pretty much, I think, yeah. where you grew up. So yeah, thought, we grew yeah, up in the same area. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing, man! I, I'm so glad you did. And yeah, that podcast was awesome because even um, for me, I, like having been in the presence of Dave and Ben, they both very much further, or well, not further, along this path. So I'm getting getting to connect with these guys who are. Um, making it easier to, I suppose, embrace this new unknown world as you you know have these realizations, especially over the last year and a half. But then realizing that there's guys out there who are feeling the same, experiencing the same, and living in this new way and trying to like navigate it all has been quite a thing. But um, yeah, it was a great discussion with them, and Dave is just so knowledgeable, especially on the the I suppose the the aspect that we were looking at was the financial. I suppose, you know, you want to get out of the system and you want to break free from this once you realize the kind of control and all the things that are going on, but you still at the end of the day need to work around the system and, and trying to figure out the best way to be sovereign and independent. And what does that even mean? I mean, it's just, it's quite a new world that we are kind of stepping into and it's, yeah, it's, it's been a, a crazy, I suppose, last two years for me specifically with the whole waking up process. Even that sounds so cliche, but it has been... <laughs> realization after realization and trying to navigate it it's fucking wild man it's like yeah it's it's i don't know what was there any catalyst for you that kind of pushed you over the edge on it for me it was the lockdowns and all that craziness but was it a long time coming for you or i know you mentioned you left your corporate job because you also felt quite overwhelmed or, or you know frustrated with the, the i think it's been a long time coming i think my patterns in life have always been make a bit of money spend it on not being at work <laughs> not doing what i love you know, then rather mm. do something I enjoy and then it runs out and then it's like the same pattern comes back in life. And I think in in, in, mm. in some ways I felt like I was further ahead in the sense that I just, I mean, even when I was younger, I didn't buy the system at all. But yeah, so you mentioned about the, the two, Dave and uh, Ben, obviously they've been living this, this kind of new way of being, you know, out of the normal system for a long time. And for you and me, it's really started quite recently. Um, so... Basically, yeah, it, it, it came about with work. I was um, I'm in the UK. Um, I'm in health. Well, I was in health and safety construction. Quite um, obviously, everything's health and safety, you know. And then obviously, this thing came along that was going to kill everybody, and they were trying yeah. to enforce obviously mask wearing and testing, and mm-hmm. obviously that is just against me, you know, against the way of my being, and I just wouldn't mm-hmm. do it basically. And I, I kept saying it's just bunch of rubbish guys and i don't it just yeah. doesn't resonate with me and i don't think it's right so obviously that didn't sit well and that didn't go well I won't get too much into it but it was three months of not really being feeling great every day because you know you're going against 
you know, the way you're meant to be going. I think life kind of pushed me in a direction. And I think that's actually really what's essentially happening to everyone right now is we're giving, mm. give, being given a choice. And it's, it's yeah. quite a big choice because it's, it's it, in the sense that it's, it's, you know, I don't want to take it too on a, a bad level and say, yeah, you choose to live or you choose to die. But essentially, you choose to live how we're meant to live in, in a harmony with nature because we're not separate from nature. That's my feeling. We are actually nature and we are a very high, you know, form or frequency of nature. And it's just time mm. now. And we've been given this amazing opportunity to live how we've always, how our hearts have always wanted to live, how we've always known and felt, yeah. especially from a young age, what's actually right to do. And the system has obviously stopped that up until very recently. The system now has mm. no control over us. It may look like it mm. has a lot of control, but my feeling is it has no control over us. And it's really yeah. up to yeah, us now. And I think that's really Definitely. what's materialized for me in the last few, few months. Um, especially the last five or six months when I've just left the job and, you know, it's not been easy. Um, but it, in, in some ways, I'm much happier than I've ever been. I've had more time with family. Mm. And also, it's the simplicity of life. I don't need lots of expensive things. And for me, you know, I mean, look, everyone's different. But for me, it's just yeah. been keeping things simple. And then, as yeah. you said, with the, you know, how do you, f how do you fix the, the monetary side of things? Because that is, that is you know, that's your... <laughs> That's the big thing, isn't it? Without the money... It's a big thing keeping everybody oh, trapped, yeah. Yeah, and it, it, that's been the yeah. system, you know. It's like, you know, you go to work, you pay your house, you know, you pay your car to drive you to work, you buy the clothes to wear at work, and the whole system's been engaged on that kind of enslavement that way. So now the question is, mm. how do we do it? I don't... How do we get out of it? Yeah. And I don't have all the answers for it, but one thing I've noticed for myself is love. <laughs> Love is, as you know, it's cliche, but real love is the key. Yeah. Love yourself, honor yourself first. And then, yeah. I mean, you said it as well. It's just, it's about passion now. It's that energy that like, you know, follow mm. your passion. And even if it's one day yeah. a week, if you have to leave, say to your boss, maybe, oh, let's, you know, I'm working 60, 70 hours a week and I hate my job. Don't tell him I hate my job and, I, and I'm going to leave. But say, look, I need, I need to work a bit less. And then as you gradually mm. work a bit less, you focus on the passion a bit more. And it may be, possibly eventually one starts to take hold more than the other one and i think there's a good chance that will start happening more and more i don't know what your yeah. thoughts are no, on it's, that. it's yeah no that's so beautifully um put and um i know what you what one of the points you raised was and it's hits home for me so hard is what i started to realize even before the the pandemic hit and and i have realized a lot but before that even leading the few years before the lockdown, all that, I was really starting to feel quite like disenfranchised with the system. And although I was super grateful for, you know, you always be, you always told, be grateful, be grateful. You've got a good job, you've got a good income, all the rest. Yes, it's great. But are you actually able to live the life you want to live? Like, are you free? Are you working Monday to Friday at a job that you hate to live for a few days? Or for me, I kept feeling like there's more to life. Like, I want to be able to live the life I want to live. Like, it's that simple. And... Um, so prioritizing health, like realizing that the system is kind of corrupt, the healthcare system's corrupt. So I've kind of been delving into all this stuff and we're having these realizations. And obviously with the lockdown um, happening, I think on externally I was happy, everything, tick box, exercise, life sorted, but inside I was really suffering. And then with the lockdown, I found myself unemployed for like eight months and one of the toughest things I've ever had to go through, but in hindsight, I'm so glad it happened because I got to sit and be like, you know what, actually, what would I rather be doing in my time? And um, that was the best thing that ever could have happened to me because I had to go back to work in December of last year to start earning an income because by that time, it was really stressful. And uh, my first day back, my soul was just like, no. Like, I got no more control over my time, no more control over my health, my sleep patterns, nothing. Like, I just... I'm governed by a system that I must just follow the times, all the times. So I was, I kept feeling like, I know it's cliche, but like a slave in the system. And uh, so I knew I had to get out and the craziness of, of, you know, everything that's gone on. I know that's a whole nother topic, but for me, like I can take a lot and I'd follow rules if they make sense to me, but like, I'm not going to do shit that makes me behave like a crazy person mm. to me. And, and once 
uh, uh, the, I feel like the pandemic really highlighted um, quite in your face how, and this is not a judgment, it's just a kind of it's observation, that a lot of people actually aren't really stopping to think about things. They, they're happy to, to listen to what they need to do and they do it. But when it comes to like me not being able to breathe fresh air, like only for me, a higher power has the, the power to tell me I can't, you know, and I just mm. became absurd. I was like, I'm not wearing a mask. It's, it's fucking madness. Um, there's, you know, we're making these irrational decisions and there's plenty of arguments on both sides, whether this works, that works. At the end of the day, it's like, you know what, I'm a free sovereign being and I should be able to make the decision on how I live my life. Like, yes, there's rules we need to follow, for sure. I mean, we need some order in, in life. Otherwise, we would have a society that devolved into chaos. But at some point, it was just like, no, this is not working for me. I'm, I, I, I can't behave like this anymore. So I, I was insulted. I felt like I was insulting my soul every day, having to go to work, on top of already feeling like, fuck, you know, I really wish I could be spending the time the way I wanted to. Now I'm having to live in a way that is completely against my, um, my soul. And so, I, I, yeah, I made the decision finally to leave, and it was a lot. And I think a lot of people struggle with that because the, the system keeps you trapped in it, especially with finances. I know so many people you know, who, who just can't leave their jobs because they need the money. And so this is an endless cycle of keeping you trapped. And it was a big decision for me, and I'm still trying to figure it out. But I must say that, I know you said it as well, since leaving that environment... Uh, I have like my personal sense of well-being and happiness has just like flourished in the most amazing way because I'm getting to spend my time the way I want to and working the way I want to doing new things and challenging myself and stepping out of that comfort zone because that comfort zone yeah once you start pushing that things just like magically happen and the synchronicities the people the interactions the conversations um, just takes on a life of its own and I really have found the magic again that I, as a kid, used to have, and I kind of lost it along the way. And now navigating this new world, it's you know I keep reminding myself that life is you know as cliche as that saying is, life's happening for you, not to you. All the shit that happens is like, okay, cool. Why is that happening? Okay, and it's like this new game of 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 life that is interesting, stressful at times, but um, I think there's a lot of people who you know are in our position who are also frustrated with the system and and the control and the kind of government overreach and all the rest that's going on and trying to figure out this new way and so like yeah it's, it is a figuring out journey but the more there's a lot of people on this path I, i've realized um such as ben and dave and and it's 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 cool to realize that it is possible to to get out the system and make it work no matter whatever it is your passion is just do it somehow, and if it's meant to be, the things will just start lining up, and it'll happen. Um, but yeah, I suppose it's my thoughts on that, and I suppose on all those different points I could chat for, for ages Definitely. on. Definitely. That was my kind of waking up experience. Um, but I will also say this, and I'll just add this in for those, um, and I was reflecting on this this morning, and one of the biggest things that I think stops people from from even, you know, changing their worldview and accepting that things aren't as they seem and, and even stepping out into this new way of life is that fear of what other people think. And I think that's definitely a fear that it's most of us carry. It's like, in some ways. Sorry? So, sorry. In some ways, it's also, it's easy not to think. Let someone else think for you is easier. Mm. Because it's hard. It's it's really yeah. hard, and and it and it's 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 not it's not that hard. Like you know, you go to gym and you do a session hard. It's it's that emotional internal mm. you hard that you have to confront yeah. feelings. Mm. And 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 I think it's I've noticed lately a lot of guys. It, it's really hard for the guys to do that because you know, especially being in South Africa, we're all more tough. You know, you, you can't have those feelings, and that's changed a lot mm. now, of course. But. It's really yeah. hard as a person to go really deep inside you and deal with those feelings because it's they are the hardest thing to mm. deal with. I would say, you know, the feelings and the thoughts and Definitely. the fears. You know that I think yeah. that's probably the hardest. Hundred percent. Definitely, it really, really is. And um, yeah, I for me, I, I, I suppose I was not lucky enough, but looking back and and thinking about my journey in this whole space. 
uh, for a few years before last year, I was really into um, Jordan Peterson's stuff um, and listened to a lot of his lectures, a lot of podcasts, and just really listened to him. And, and as much as he has his own kind of, I don't agree with all of his like lifestyle stuff, but his, his way of talking about thinking and critically thinking, all the rest really got me to analyze my own shit and, and the way I did things and, and thought about things. Um, and he was also, I suppose, a big... Big into the, the horrors of the 20th century. So it inspired me to look more into that. And that also gave me a lot more awakenings in terms of what's going on now. But that's a, that's a whole other topic. But yeah, the, the fear of what other people think is the biggest. Like most people are just constantly wanting validation from others. And that's great. We all do that. I mean, that's part of our nature. But a lot of people aren't, are just kind of following the crowd. And if you, when you do have this kind of, realizations or wake up when you start to realize that this isn't the way things are supposed to be there's something wrong i want to it's it's not easy because even your own family and friends were not going to under, particularly understand what you're going through and actually might think you're a bit crazy like i had family and friends thinking i was a bit crazy yep. last year and so you have to be willing to take that that listen you know that that judgment from other people because it's going to come uh, it, no matter what you do when you follow what's true to your heart or your soul and you decide fuck it i'm going to do it i'm going to leave my job, I'm going to do this. Like People still don't understand that I've left my industry and now I'm just figuring it out and starting my own business. But it's like, why would, people think, why would you leave that? And it's like, you don't understand. Like The way I view the world now is different. There, yeah. but I don't expect you to understand. Yeah, and, and it's okay. Not everybody needs to understand. Um, you know, it's like if you're 70 years old, it's a nice analogy I heard the other day. It's like if you're 70 years old, you're not going to judge a 20-year-old for behaving like a 20-year-old. Everybody is just uniquely where they need to be on their path. So it's okay if people don't understand where you're at, you don't need to understand where they're at, but everybody's just, I suppose, on where they need to be for their evolution. Um, and that's different for different people. Absolutely. So, I think what you said about the validation, yeah. um, you know, you've got that, that self-validation from everyone else and what they think. And then on the other side, you've got people always following other people, other gurus out there, other spiritual gurus or other money gurus, or whatever it is, mm. to look up to them. And I think those both are just so unhealthy because at the end of the day, we are all individual, sovereign, unique, loving beings, beings of love. And we all have infinite potential to create the reality and the life that we want to live, no matter who we are, no matter what we've done uh, in this life, um, and no matter what you know, we're going through right now. And, and I think it really comes down to that, why we have this massive split, which sometimes I get into judgment too, and I just look at it and go, what the fuck are you doing? You know, what, what are you doing? You know, and then sometimes yeah. you just got to step back yeah. and say, look, it's okay. It really is okay. You just got to let them, they're going to make their own decisions. And I think there is a point now with this, as you said, the last two years with all this stuff and more pressure being applied and it more more people waking up mm. to it is because more of it's coming to the surface for us to see, which is a great thing. It's a one side. It's mm. it's shit, <laughs> but on the other side, it needs to be yeah. this way because otherwise you can't see it, and and th it's just gonna get like that. The more control, the more pressure, and pressure something explodes. And internally, that feeling you had at work, and I've had that as well when I've been back a few times, and I just didn't want to be there. And the heart's just like this is so unnatural. I'm done with this now, you know and you find yourself stuck, that feeling is getting stronger now. And that feeling is accelerating. Mm. And it's ha the more pressure that gets put on, the more acceleration is going to happen in that, and the more people are going to wake up. And it's, it's really good in that sense. Yeah. And it's so important for us to get that out yeah. and, and have this discussion, because there's no difference between us and other people out there mm. in the same situation. You know, make the leap of faith. I mean, I, mm. there's no mistakes. I look back and I could call them mistakes where I've decided to move all over the world and restart and get out of a situation. And I've literally been down to like, let's say one rand or one pound. And it's looked really mm -hmm. depressing and everything's nearly been lost. But life will just keep supporting you. You just keep moving forward mm -hmm. no matter what. You yeah. know, it's just trust in yourself, sure. not in a guru, not caring what mm -hmm. other people think. It's really trust yourself. Because we're all unique. Mm. We all have some passion we're yeah. meant to be here for. We were born for this time. Yeah. We're here. Yeah, let's do it. Mm. You know, it really is that. And yeah. I have big ups for and big sure. day, uh, down days. You know, I'm human. Mm. I make mistakes. Mm. You know, 
Exactly. It's just keep going. And, and when, you, sure. when you're having the down days, keep going. find someone who's in the good mood. Be around them. You know? <laughs> Let them cheer mm. you up. Find something you like doing. <laughs> exactly. Crack on again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Life, life really does um, support you when you start moving forward, like in your truth. And yeah, it's, I, I love what you touched on earlier um, about, you know, the different gurus and all the rest. And I, I must say, from my experience, I for years was like reading different self-help books and the next person and the next, and it's great. But I constantly felt, I suppose, inferior to all these experts and gurus and all the rest trying to figure it out. But eventually through a lot of my own work, a lot with plant medicines and, and that helped me a lot. But realizing that at the end of the day, we are all, we are all fucking powerful beings, like all of us. So like not some guru, not some, yes, they all have their wisdoms and that, but like we can be our own guides as well. So, so when you start trusting in yourself and and realize your like kind of inherent power and the your connection to the universe, the great spirit, whatever you want to call it, God or whatever, there is some kind of intelligence. And when you start, for me, I find once you start realizing that you are part of that, you're not separate from it, uh, and the most amazing things start to unfold and. It's it's pretty magical once you trust in that process and have faith. And like I've never understood what faith is. I was raised as a Christian Catholic. I went completely opposite. I was like, fuck this shit. I'm not into religion. I'm not into this. I was like, none of this should make sense. Went on my own journey trying to figure out things. And it's kind of all come around circle to where I'm now at a place where it's like, I know there's a higher power. I know there's something else out there. Um, okay, I know I'm part of that. I am also that. And we all are. Um, so, okay, now I'm going to create the life I want to create and live the life I want to live. Okay. And then like, there's just this unfolding of things that happen. Like you said, you found yourself with like no money, like, but now where you're at now things unfold and, and it just gets magical. And, and yeah, I've found it to be pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. Um, but just realizing your own power. Most people give away their power. It's the same what's happening now. They give away their power and to external politicians or fucking you know doctors who quite honestly are not mm. gods they're not any better than you so these people are making your life decisions and you must just submit without questioning it it's like realize that you are an, a very powerful being so think for yourself if that doesn't align with your values or your feelings then like don't listen to it like start standing up in your power and in your truth and i think that more people need to realize that they are not just you know they are, they are powerful beings and I think that's been a big realization for me and you know it's it's yeah that's I suppose my thoughts on it on is that. because um, the whole system's yeah, been designed to tell you the opposite it's always been inverted you know you, you have to go to the doctor for help mm. but actually when you're not at the doctor you're you're breathing and your heart's beating and your body's obviously doing something for you to be there still so your body's obviously super intelligent as it is but we haven't bothered to talk to it or engage with it, or just be with it, yeah. you know? I mean, something so similar, mm. simple, sorry, as just being still with your body, just with you, with who you are. You know, that intelligence mm. is already far more than you're ever going to learn from, from most schools and things like that. Um, so, yeah, as you said, the whole system's been designed to do the opposite. Now we're breaking away from that, and mm. we're spending more time on doing things that we love doing, being with ourselves, and finding out who we really are. And, and, and that unfolding is beautiful. And it, and it has to be in stages. Definitely. Not everyone's and, and ready to do it straight away. You know, the body's got to go through certain processes as mm. well. Um, so it's all more an individual mm. thing. I mean, you could say that's just like eating and food. Instead of saying you shouldn't do one thing, everyone does what they feel is right for them, opposed from what you're mm. told you must do, you know, what the politician says, you, we're doing this, this is for mm. your own good, or you need to have this medicine because this is for your own good. Mm. No, 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 no. We're not doing that anymore, mm. are we? We're yeah. only doing what we think is good for ourselves yeah. and causing no harm to others in the process. Yeah. That's what it's about now. Yeah. Definitely. And, and I think that's such a key point because the body is where it's all at. So most people, I mean, I think as a society, we are quite disconnected and everything is making us more and more disconnected from ourselves, from nature, from other people. I mean, even let's look at the boss thing. It's like, we're not connecting anymore. This is crazy. So we disconnected in so many ways, fragmented. And when 
like what's going on in the world now. And I, I was into health and, and all these things even before the pandemic. But so I realized that this this body that we have um, for me is this experience of life, whatever your views on it all is about, the way that we experience this it is through this amazing vessel which has an intelligence that we don't understand. Like how do our fingernails grow? I don't know. It's busy happening. This This body is so powerful. And reforming that relationship with your body is essential. That's why I like it's, you know, most doctors these days aren't trained in nutrition. They aren't trained in real health. They're trained in how to prescribe medication to treat, uh, you know, symptoms and stuff. And that's all another conversation. Yeah, by the medical there companies. Is, you know, nuances in that, all of that. By the pharmaceutical yeah. companies. And though. so I started realizing, exactly, these pharmaceuticals, these antidepressants, these antibiotics, Exactly, and they, they are making people sicker. So everything is upside down because we have a system that's actually keeping people sick, disconnected from themselves. And I mean, when last did you go to a doctor and he asked you, hey, Bradley, how's your sleep? Are you sleeping good? How's your stress levels? How's your relationship? How's your general life? They don't ask you those questions. They just, they, there's such a disconnect because most of our problems can be solved by ourselves and the body can take care of itself. And that's why for me it's crazy like, I don't want to go into the whole vaccine debate. I'm pretty sure most people know what my stance is on it. But it's just insane to me that people are willing to inject themselves, not even thinking about what. Like, how do you want to experience the rest of this, the rest of this reality? Are you going to play games with it because you're just listening to people who don't know what... You know, there's obviously sinister agendas out there. And it's like it all comes back to the body. Listen to your body. And the body will also guide you. It'll tell you, you know, when you're in shit situations or when you're not or when you been overeating, overindulging, or you haven't been moving, and the body is where it's at. And like, if you can get more in tune with your body every day by simple practices, um, I don't know, movement or breath work or meditation or whatever, like coming home to yourself, I found is just so powerful because from there you can make better decisions and kind of find that flow easier. Um, but yeah, body body awareness is just like changed my life and been quite a yeah, pivotal thing. But it's for me. what you said, you know, with the whole medicalization stuff. Not going fully into that, but it's it's just it comes down to that it's giving the power away. You know, it's it's just giving mm. it to somebody yeah. else to make the it's decision not... and saying, "Yep, they've done everything. They know what's better for me." But without mm. even yeah, it's, taking it's, the time to have trust... a look at what actually is better for me, you know, because who who on earth yeah. is going to know what's no. better for you than you? I mean, nobody. Nobody. It's just that simple. No one yeah. can know what's better for you than you. Sure, if you're a little child and you have mom and dad, and they know what's better for you, and they're doing the best they can when you're at a certain age. But when you when you when you're an mm -hmm. adult and you've you've been on the earth a while, I think there's only one person that's going to know what really is best for you. Essentially, if you really feel it. But the problem is, it's been just given the power mm -hmm. for someone else to take that responsibility on, and that's a dangerous thing to be doing. Yeah. It is very dangerous, and uh, especially when it comes to health. So, you know, and, and this is what my main argument against a lot of the, I suppose, the catalyst for my, a lot of my awakenings in, in the, what's going on in the world was, like, like you said, I know what's best for my body. I know how to take care of myself, and I'm still learning, obviously, but I, I understand my body is an aid wisdom to look after itself. I'm my, you know, so... When this lockdown happened, especially in South Africa, I don't know how crazy it was that side. I know the UK was also pretty crazy. It was like they shut us inside. At that stage, I was living in an apartment, no garden. I wasn't even allowed to run or walk inside my complex. Jeez. And I wasn't able to move and exercise. And, I, and like, it was deeply like, who the fuck can tell me I can't like keep healthy? I can't go into the sunshine. I can't go to the beach. I can't do all the things that I do to keep healthy, spend time in the ocean or whatever. And so the alarm bells went off where it was like, we're gonna, the government was like, we're going to look after your guys' health. Don't worry. We've got this sorted. But in the meantime, they're making people sicker by wearing masks all day, sanitizing the shit out of themselves, and um, you know, making us live in fear and cower in our houses. And I was, I was just like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And that catapult, I suppose, drove me more into like, well, what is actually going on in the world? And... Unfortunately, most people don't spend five minutes actually doing a bit of research. And this isn't about looking into conspiracies. It's about let's just start connecting the dots here. What is actually 
Let's listen to some experts who are being banned. For, for, well, I don't know why they're being banned. Should we listen to them? Well, let's have a listen. Then we understand why they're being banned because they're speaking a lot more truth than these people on the TV are telling us. So then you start to realize, like, hang on, okay. Uh, and then I suppose the rest is, is history in terms of once you see what's going on, you can't unsee it. And then people think you're crazy when you're like, <laughs> so it's like, for me, I've gone to the point now where I just. Last year, I was really caught up in it, trying to convince people of my worldview, but obviously realizing that's futile and everybody's going to, you know, what, have the realization they need to have. If I come to you and I tell you, this is what's going on, like, you need to find that out for yourself. Obviously, I can guide you if you're really interested, but it's also my truth. It's my, I suppose understanding now i try not get as much involved in it I, I, i'm aware of what's going on but i kind of look at what's going on understanding that i'm busy creating a life that doesn't rely on that system and navigating around it but i try not get too caught up in it now because i was like every day like oh my god because there's so much information out there about what's going on it's just like it gets a bit much so trying to stay detached and just focus on on the good shit essentially you know to attract more of that uh, but it's hard though because there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world and it's hard not to get caught up and also feed that you know they, they, the system wants to keep us divided Absolutely. it wants to keep us separate and fighting and and I I must say I'll admit a lot of the times was fighting from the other side but like fuck you guys you need to wake up like look what's going on look you, you, you helping drive this bullshit stop but it's like uh, unplug I don't want to add to that energy anymore now I want to just try and add to I suppose creating the, the, the new way of, of life and that happens by actually doing it and embodying it not telling other people exactly how to that. Do it, I suppose. No, because I mean you you were doing that from the best mm. intention. You you're doing that from love. Like you really wanted them to see. Why can't you guys see? But that's also part of you yeah. know the unfolding of it because when you're trying to do that you're getting frustrated and angry and they can't see. Not yet, you know? Mm. It's kind of life mm. needs to do that for mm. them. Life will do that. Like the, the whole design of life, the whole way it functions, the whole program of life will probably do that to them anyway, naturally. When the time's right, everything will fall into place. Mm. You know, the DNA will be at a certain point where they're ready mm. to see something. And, you know, some people are very good at working on people. I know one or two that are excellent at working on people, and they've got a good success rate. But generally speaking, I'm not good at working on people. And what you said now, you know, I've also been there and yeah. tried that, but maybe sometimes subtly, sometimes just get upset and just leave it at that. But the thing that you just said that is actually the mm. most important thing right now, and it's for all of us to just do more and more and more, is that's just quite simple. Do what you're doing and do it with love. And that's all you need to do because mm. just by grounding that and living mm. like that, you're permeating that love, you're permeating that new frequency, that new life, that new way of being. And it's infectious. It's simply yeah. infectious. Your yeah. energy that's in a good way is infectious. It connects people. It dissolves mm -hmm. the old bullshit. You know, it shows you there is another choice. Yeah. You know, there's another reality here. It's already here. It's mm. not like it's going to be some 5D thing and we're going to be floating around, mm. you know, and like rocketing our souls yeah. everywhere. You're doing it and, and, and more of people are doing it. And it's just... It's lovely. It's really good, you know. Mm. Thank you. It is. It, no, amazing. And likewise, right back at you. It, it, is, it is a case of, I suppose, getting to or starting to embody it. And for me, like the days where I started realizing, I mean, going into vibration and frequency and that conversation is also, it's a lot out there now, but it really is a case of like, where are you at? So I've started realizing I spoke to somebody the other day and I had some really, really deep conversations with her and how basically on like a very, very deep level, everybody else is like reflecting back to you yourself. So when you see the, the crazy shit in the world and like it pisses you off and all the rest and you get absorbed in it, like it's also reflecting back at you what you need to kind of look at. So it's a constant like mirror, the, the, the world. And so... I found like on the days where I wake up and potentially look at the news and get angry and be like, how can they be enforcing this shit? Anyway, then I have like, I kind of attract those interactions throughout mm. the day. So then I'll like, have the, the people telling me to put masks on and like irritating like confrontations. Uh, but the days where I'm focusing on myself and I'm getting my morning routine done, I'm feeling good and I'm not worried about that bullshit, like it doesn't really come into my sphere. 
So you're constantly creating and experiencing this reality like simultaneously. Um, so yeah, the more we can just all not forget about that crazy stuff. But for me, it's like, well, I didn't come out to incarnate to take that vaccine. I'm not taking it. So I don't have to worry about it anymore. I'll just figure out a way around the craziness. And it's okay. Um, that's my life path. I want to figure it out. Somebody else might come here to take it. And I'm not going to be the one to be like, hey, you shouldn't take that. I'll advise you to please go look at the, the information and, have, and do some research. But I'm not caught up in trying to convince anybody, please, please do this, don't do that. Because that's just, yeah, it's, it's actually not fair on me to impose on their life and lessons that they need to learn and figure out. And, you know, it's, it's yeah, I've, I've just realized that the more I focus on myself, and also as cliche as it sounds, it's like, I don't know who said it, probably one of these gurus or whatever, but you could, the only way to heal the world is to heal yourself. And I found to be so deeply true. Like the more I focus on really healing myself, like, like that's all that actually matters. Like you're trying to, everybody's trying to, everybody's trying to heal other people and fix the world, but they haven't even fixed themselves. And it's all a mirror, themselves. isn't it, really? It definitely starts with your body and come, yeah, it's all a mirror, for and sure. positive really and negative side, you know, you... You heal yourself, life heals around you. You love yourself, yeah. life, life loves you. You know, you mm. honor yourself, li life honors you. It really is. Yeah. You know, for me, that's been the big learning. Mm. You know. Yeah. No, it really is. Yeah, and all the little triggers, all the things that trigger you, it's, it's, um, yeah, just it's mirroring back at you, and it's yeah, it's it's, it's a crazy time, man. Um, but I had a quite a interesting experience yesterday where I was. I was I was in the gym, okay. So and I and I still go to the Virgin Active, yeah. But I really don't like going because they enforce the the masks thing, and they're like they're really irritated about it. I don't really comply with it, but yes, like in before, what would happen was um, somebody would come to me, and be like, "Put your mask on if you're going to move <laughs> between machines," and I'd like really get angry angry about it, you know, like like. But that's me, like also judging this person who doesn't know any better for them they're doing the best that they can and they think that they're doing a good job so but it used to really trigger me and yesterday i went and it same thing happened and it triggered me but not for like for a fraction of the time and i was like i don't i don't need to always react to the craziness it's okay it's all out there happening but yeah i don't need to feed it i don't need to react and make a scene and all the rest and, i usually just say um, no so the more we can... I just say no and walk yeah. off. I, I yeah, just politely I, I, I say do. no, I, thank you. Yeah, and, I, stand and I just my, carry on because a lot of the time people yeah. don't know how to deal yeah. with the word no. Mm, yeah, <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of I argue back and I'm like, well, listen, this is insane. Like, does it make sense to you? Like, do you really understand that this doesn't make any sense at all what you're asking me to do? And it's always the same kind of generic. This is just the rules. This is what we need to do. And it's like, at that point, I realized I'm speaking to somebody who's just regurgitating. Totally. That's all they can do. Um, sound bites that they've heard. And unfortunately, going back to the thinking thing, most people don't think. So they just, they're just regurgitating sound bites that they've heard in conversations or rules and, and they don't think about things. So I realized... It's futile to argue with some of these people. It's like, you know what, I'm not doing it. I'll speak to your manager if you need to. I'm like, it's, it's just crazy. And then, like you said, they genuinely just don't know how to have, like handle somebody actually kicking back at them in a nice way, trying to do it from a place of it love. It is hard, totally. I was going to say, what would happen if you said to them something, just give them compliments rather, just say, no, thank you, and then change the subject and go, how are you mm. today, you know? Like, you know, you, you look like you look quite, a, you look, <laughs> looking well today, you know, looking really, really well today. Like, and just keep changing the subject and see what, you know, that kind of love engagement changes. I mean, it might do nothing whatsoever, but at the, at the end of the day, you might get a laugh out of it, you know, so. Yeah, I, I'm yet to get to that point. I, I still, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we've had a few experiences like that as well in, in, in England. I mean, it's been a lot easier over here, you know, like I, I, never really wore one and i had encounters all the time from mm. everyone police and they're just much easier here to deal with in south africa that is definitely for sure um but i found mm. out of london i live in london and out of london i find that it was much harder we got in especially when we went on holiday during the middle of it we went went out of london had a little break and just it's just fear you know, it's just fear. And I, mm. I, that is the divide, you know, we were talking about earlier on. 
it's it's hard to deal with because as you say sometimes you just can't be asked to deal with it and you just piss off you know you don't want to know about it but at yeah. the end of the day it's yeah. another divide and it's trying mm. to it's it's hard to navigate. I, I I have better days at navigating it and and worse days. I mean, right now we don't really have an issue with it, mm. but I'm winter's here and just about, and it's going to start mm. all over again. And I might l try deal with it a bit differently yeah. this time. Come, you know, the funny thing is, I I, I have yeah, never had the yeah. conversation about the mask with with someone in a depth conversation because I've actually studied. Part of my job was face for testing and masks. And there's a certain procedure you do to make sure the masks work. Obviously, different masks for different things, from dusts to mu uh, f um, uh, fumes to mist, etc. And I can guarantee you, having any conversation with anyone trying to tell me about a mask, they're not going to even know who the accreditation is. Never mind the testing process. Never mind the materials. <laughs> so I've never had that conversation, but I yeah. think in a nice light conversation, that might be an educational one next time I do have that conversation because they don't work mm. the way they say they work. Yeah. It's, it, you know, and, yeah. and as you say, once yeah, again, it's the not. power, you know, you've, you've taken it from the, the doctor or the scientist or whatever. And they've said, no, that you've got to do this for your health. And you know what they've, mm. they've turned around in, in, in England now. It's yeah. not for your health. It's because you care. So it's a guilt trip now. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. It's a guilt trip. Yeah. It's wild. It's it is so it is so sinister what they're doing because they and and I know we're chatting about the mass and the vaccine and all that. At the end of the day, like for me what it comes down to is I don't care what you do. I genuinely don't care. But let me like Free it's a choice. Like don't force people to do things like it's free will. And this is like part of becoming sovereign and out of the system and an independent person and reclaiming your power. It's like, okay, great. Like I make my life decisions because nobody else has the authority to do that. Obviously I can't come and infringe on your rights. I mean, that's natural law. So, but if, if, if you decide, okay, it's good for, it's for the health of the public to, they must wear masks and all the rest, then inform them, educate them on your, your, I suppose your theories and your, your reasons why and then trust them to make the right decisions because it's quite insulting that they have to threaten people with jail time in South Africa for not wearing a fucking mask it's like who are you to tell me that like, like I will assess both sides of the argument and I've seen plenty of very overwhelming evidence to suggest that face masks are actually driving people to yeah. get sick because of a whole bunch of reasons but it's like, let me make the decision for me. It's like, if you want to wear two masks or three masks or four masks, like, that's okay. Like, I'm not going to judge you for it. Okay, I probably will. Um, but, like, do you. Like, if you want to get vaccinated, take the vaccine. Like, I'm done trying to convince people of what to do. But I just want to be left alone to do what I want to do. And, like, after almost two years of this now, it's like, at what point are people going to say, okay, well, when can we make our own decisions? Because this is a bit ludicrous now that we have to be continually micromanaged like we're children. Um, and it's just, it's insane. And that for me is like, the only thing that triggers me is when somebody takes away my free will and like, no, 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 you must put a mask on now. Like, who are you to tell me? Do you know anything about any of this stuff? And generally they don't. And it's difficult because I also, a lot of most of last year was me giving away my energy because I actually had spent hundreds of hours researching, listening to experts delving deep on this and I had the facts but people actually don't want to hear them so you're trying to convince somebody listen this is why masks actually don't work and you have all the reasons but at the end of the day they're still going to turn around and be like listen sorry so see, this is the so like I used to get frustrated they can't see and then also you're giving away your energy and I realized I would leave these encounters like mm really drained energetically because I'm feeling like I'm trying to do good work by helping people and, and but all I'm doing is like getting more and more frustrated because I'm trying to convince them to see the way I see and that's also unfair and it's actually not right to me to your, enforce your but it is frustrating when they I really hate and I don't use that word often hmm. being told what to do in, in that sense especially when it comes to health and I've spent years on my own health journey so now I've got people who've never spent five minutes on health telling me how to be healthy and that for me is just insane and ludicrous so I'm not doing sorry yeah so but yeah so we could I know no man it's it's just a while and I think it all comes down to choice it's like as sovereign beings that that's what I've been focusing on is 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 living in, in alignment with that truth for me and everybody needs to figure out what works for them there's different Definitely. different strokes for different folks but um, what's going on in the world is you know 
people don't. I find some people just want to stick yeah. their head further in the sand and not look at what's going on because they just want. It's fear, like you said, the fear is driving them to just want to get back to normal. I just want things to go back to normal, okay? And, no, but that, the thing is, that, it's never going to go back gone. to normal. We need I, to start. I also wanted um, to say something about that because, mm. you know, there's this system that's gripping very hard now worldwide. And a lot of this has been pushed on as health. But it's not that. It, it, it's obviously clear to many of us that it isn't because, I mean, if you look at Hunger, for instance, hunger killed a, a, at least three million people a year, but we didn't hear much about that, did we? Which is very, very interesting. Mm. But now we've got the system that is really gripping yeah. so hard worldwide, and it's going to get harder. And it's not about what you've done <laughs> yeah, or what you haven't health. done, because the grip is on everyone. And I think that's yeah. that's the focus, as you said last year, was like, why can't you guys see? And there was, the, and, and that created anger and fear and a divide. But now it's like, okay, well, we need to embrace mm -hmm. each other now. Whether you've had a medicalization, or you've done something that we don't mm -hmm. fully agree with, we 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 all need to get together. And I think that's really where it's at now. It's really mm -hmm. just that love for each other and to say, okay, you know, certain things have happened. Mm. But we need all of us to yeah. do this, you know, yeah. because it's gonna get it's gonna get tighter. Yeah. It's, it's not and it's not just, you know, it's it's really gonna get harder. But yeah. and once uh, and one side of it, it's getting mm. a lot easier, as we you know we said before. The more you start living in love, the more you start embodying more of yourself, the more you start following the passion and trying to do it a different mm. way. It's hard, but it's easier in many aspects. It feels the the mm. easier the easiness I think in it is the soul side, the, the, the heart side, the, wow, I'm, I'm actually doing what I should be doing now. Yes, it's hard, but I don't have that horrible feeling mm. like when I went back to that job you said. That's, that's soul destroying, as they say, you know, excuse the mm. pun there. Mm. You know, it's, 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 it's the opposite. It's yeah, like it you're feeding, it's nourishing, it's love. It's fucking hard, mm. but it's better, mm. you know? And then the more pressure like, you no, get, the more better. control so we get on this planet, the more people have to go mm. to that feeling yeah. because it's inevitable. That's what's happening. Mm. There's no going back to an old world. It doesn't exist. Mm. There's definitely an, another reality, yeah. which people are getting tied into at the moment, as we can see, yeah. but that's not going to last either. Yeah. There's only going to be one reality on this plane and it's going to be yeah. based on nature and love, you know, yeah. and I wish you would fucking hurry up. Spot on. <laughs> And I and I, I know I also I also wish it would hurry up and and I I, I think that us on the, I suppose one side of this medicalization or whatever what's going on we I suppose are more inclined to ex be like you know what okay everybody is entitled to do what they want to do that's our whole I suppose argument is choice but and you touched on this earlier and it was a good point it's it's very manipulative what they are doing at the moment because they. You know, if you look at history, anytime you, anytime you prioritize the group over the individual, mm -hmm. you run into trouble. So anytime you, for the greater good of all, you must comply. When you, when you have that kind of thinking, you must mm -hmm. fucking run the other direction. Because that's what's led to the death of over like 100 million people in the 20th mm -hmm. century was that kind of thinking. So it's like, well, Bradley, everybody else needs to be safe. So you must get vaccinated because you must look after everybody else. Absolutely not. Like... Once you start telling people, taking away their individual liberties and freedoms because it's for the greater good in the name of safety, we must look after everybody, it doesn't take much looking into history to realize that that very, that kind of thinking ideology process is, is disastrous. So, but they're really good at manipulating people because now the people, a lot of people who have been vaccinated are really believe that mm -hmm. we are a problem. So, and, and the media and the, all this stuff of driving this 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 thing, kind of thinking, and it's 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 kind of worrying, but at the same time, like you know what, it's okay. We'll still navigate it. But I, I really hope that humanity, and I, and I feel like it will. That timeline will materialize. I feel like once we get through this craziness, just like let's stop judging each other and what they're doing, what they're not doing, and let's just all come together in love, like you say, and and just acceptance. Like the you know, I, I hope I hope that. 
materialize as soon as well because yeah it's just it is a bit worrying to see how they are twisting the narrative making you know it doesn't take long to look at history and see the same patterns repeating now but i think there's one difference here now Mm. that you know it's always been like that they've always done a cull they've always they've always manipulated societies to shape societies from all different Mm. avenues and it's the same process over and over again like a program it's a virus and it's a program um, the difference mm. is now, if you look at a lot of, yeah. my feeling is this anyway, if you look at a lot of ancient, uh, ancient tribes, you know, all over the world, they always had an ending of the world, especially the Mayans. I think it was 2012. And I think the ending of the world mm. was correct. It was the ending of the old world and the frequency that was negative that was tied in here. That frequency is now gone, you know. But what's left behind is the fallout of it, yeah. you know, the little minions. And mm. there's not that many of them, but yeah. they are they are making a mess. But at the same time, no matter what they yeah. do, they are creating a positive effect because the more pressure they put on once again, the more they wake up. Can you imagine if you've, yeah. you've you, for us, I mean, I don't know how, I've been awake for a long time, luckily, because of my mother, she's been very awake and probably worked on me a lot when I was younger. <laughs> but um, oh, wow, if nice. you think about, it's hard <laughs> to wake up, it can be very lonely. Um, you know, when, when you say things and people look at, you know, you're from another planet, basically, this guy's mad. And I've had that many times in my life and, mm. you know, whatever, I didn't really care that much about it. But there's two things that are happening now. It's nice to wake up now in some ways on a one side when there's more support around you and more people that are seeing that way. That's a nice, beautiful thing. One other thing based on that is if you've gone down the whole agenda route and you've bought into a medicalization and you've really believed and you've put your power in that and then you wake up can you imagine how angry you're going to be Mm. and that that kind of anger from internal fire that's going to come through you is going to totally change reality whether you've been medicalized Mm. or not but the point is that will speed up this process yeah yeah, no, I think you're spot on. And yeah, the the amount of people, healthy people who are being injured by these vaccines. Can you imagine buying into that system and then and then having these terrible things happen to you? And I think, like you said, that the more they apply this pressure, the more they kind of... Somebody said to me once, and it really stuck, it was, you know, the agenda or the people or all the, you know, this, this corruption that's going on, all the people driving this shit... They've kind of put themselves in a room and they've closed the door behind them. Now they've exposed themselves and they keep exposing more and more and more. And the more that they're doing this, the more people are waking up. So I think that, you know, that contrast between the good, bad, dark, light, whatever, kind of rising together. But I do think that is a shift in the whole paradigm of of the end of an era. I think we are moving into a new age and the new earth. And I, I think it is I mean, we've definitely incarnated in a very crazy time on this planet's um, like evolution. So, I do think there's a lot of chaos before the, you know, the the light at the end of the tunnel. I think we're still busy going through that. Um, but I do think there's going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. It's going to be a very interesting, beautiful world. I think on the other side. Definitely. I mean, it shouldn't have to be this um, way, but it, I suppose it is. Yeah. And, you know, as you mentioned, you know, having that medicalization and the damage it could do, it's 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 a horribly sad. No one should have to be damaged or maimed by something like that. It's just so, so yeah. wrong and so evil and so in in many ways. It just doesn't even, I, I, I must say, I do struggle to deal with it. Um, just the, the sheer, you know, mm. darkness behind it to do that to someone, never mind to children. Yeah, I think, I think. Um, but there's a bigger picture, I suppose. And sometimes we just remember that. Sorry. Hmm. Sorry, sorry, I'm interrupting you. I think the struggle that comes in is when, like, we genuinely don't want people to get injured. So then you almost feel like, well, I, 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 I can see it. So I need to show people so that they can also potentially avoid. Uh, so you get caught up. I got caught up in that, like, well, fuck. There's not many people that. Uh, when I first had this awakening, at the beginning of lockdown, I was like, how many people who know who know about this? So I need to help educate them because. But so that has been a struggle to to see. The people still going out and obviously and completely unaware as to what's going on and you know even that there is a bigger agenda at play so it's yeah it's, it's, it's a difficult one to stay detached from what's going on in the world because there's a lot of suffering but i know in my own personal life i'm so grateful for all the suffering i've had because it's definitely catapulted me into 
where I'm going now. But yeah, it's it's that constant in. Yeah, it's that constant. I suppose balance and try to keep coming back to myself. Okay, okay, crazy out there. I can only control what happens. Here. And also, maybe so, there's something that we've I've missed yeah. and maybe mm-hmm. haven't missed. You know, everything is frequency, and we're embodying more of this love frequency who we, I believe we really are. Now, as we talked before, our bodies, we need to trust in them more. They are amazing. There's a very, very good possibility that even with such a medicalization, our frequency will override the damage that's caused. You know, our bodies are changing. You know, we, yeah. you know, we have aches and yeah. pains and we shed and mm. getting rid of things that are not needed in our DNA and our yeah. bodies have to change to embody more of that frequency. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Mm. There is a change happening. So with that new embodiment and more of it mm. coming in and this reality birthing itself right now, there's an extremely good chance that all of that negative damage will get overwritten for many of us. But I think that's totally individual and we don't just initially fully decide that. I think that's part of our individual person's journey. Mm. And, you know, some bodies might drop and leave. Um, and some may not. Mm. Yeah. And it's all okay. It's all going to be, at the end of the day, it's all going to be okay. It's, you know, you you can't, you can't have the the dark without the light. You can't just have all bliss and happiness because you have nothing to contrast with. So it's like, I I try to remind myself of that when I look at the world, I'm like, well, it's all crazy out there, but if we didn't have that, we wouldn't have all the amazing other sides. So like if, you know, People are going to die. People are dying. People die all the time. And that's not the end of the world because for me, I realize it's not the end of the road. There's a lot more that happens after that. So I've, I've kind of radically accepted what's going on is, is what's going on. It's just, yeah, it is what it is. It's just the great, I suppose, unfolding of life. Um, but, uh, but I think we're about to run out of time. Yeah, we've got like 20 seconds Darren, left. time doesn't and, uh, exist. I know we've got an hour on this, <laughs> this road. <laughs> no, I wish so. We wish we could just carry on telling. Um it does on that clock. So we might cut off now. Let's see what happens. But if we do cut off, I definitely want to continue a part two of this because I think there's oh, so much more. Oh, we can definitely we can, catch up again and have a chat. About, man. I, really, I really enjoyed the chat. Yeah, no, 100%.